Welcome to Daily Five for Thursday, December 14th, 2023. I did a five just under, one day under, tomorrow will be a month ago, but one day under a month ago about the Pixel Watch 2, and I stand by that five, so this is not about the Pixel Watch 2. If you want my thoughts on that, go listen to that five. And I think I talked about it on the show that week as well. But at the same time I got the Pixel Watch 2, I also got the Pixel 8 Pro. That was part of the trading deal for the new phone and the new watch. And I had talked about on at least one five that there were some weird issues and one really shake your head type of problem with the Pixel 7 Pro, which I largely liked. But the one that really was a stunner to me was how bad using the camera was. And I want to be very clear because I don't know if I pointed this out when I talked about it, but I should have if I didn't. I'm not using, was not using, and currently I'm not using any type of third-party software with the camera. I wasn't on the 7 Pro, I'm not on the 8 Pro. I was using the camera app built in to the Google phone. The only thing I did that really could have affected it, and I ruled this out, was I do use a custom launcher. And I disabled that for a week to see if that had any effect on the camera. It did not. The camera had the same bugginess, so it was not the launcher. Other than that, there is nothing that should have interfered. And I don't even think the launcher would have, but I just wanted to rule it out. But even ruling out the launcher did not stop the bugginess with the camera. This is Google's camera, camera software for the camera on their flagship device that they market as the best way to use Android. It's very important to point that out. This is the phone, the hardware, the software, everything that should outperform any other Android phone, period, based on the way that Google positions it, and that it is the closest to their being able to control the hardware directly. You would expect that this, and I'm not saying it necessarily has to be twice as good as another Android phone, but it should be the best one, or at least in the top three, and I don't know if you could honestly say that, in fact, you probably can't, but it really should be the best Android phone you can use. And when the camera which is one of the things that Google, as with every other phone manufacturer now, touts as one of their signature features. When the camera doesn't work properly, when you're not doing anything difficult with it, you have to start to wonder. And that wasn't the only thing. There were a number of little issues. There was just a general sense that the 7 Pro wasn't quite finished. It wasn't a bad phone by any stretch. It wasn't a you know terrible experience, but you would run into these strange little things. And again, when you consider what the phone represents... It seemed odd. So I went into the 8 Pro, and this is not a review, by the way. I have not had it long enough to do a review. But I did want to mention, because I I criticize a lot of things. If you listen to the show for a while, I criticize a lot of stuff. And the other side of that is I have to give credit when it feels like a company or a product has either course corrected or is, is doing something right. And I have to say, honestly, having used the 8 Pro pretty much the same way as it did the 7 Pro for over a month now or so, or whatever it is, It does feel like most of the rough edges that were present in the 7 Pro, the inexplicable rough edges, do seem to have been smoothed out. So either they were listening to feedback and they found problems and fixed them. I've seen some reviews that said the Tensor 2 chip might be responsible. I don't know. I don't... It doesn't feel right to me. These didn't feel like performance problems. These felt like bugs in the software that weren't tested properly. It did not feel like there wasn't enough horsepower. Now, it could be. I don't know. I'm not a software or a hardware engineer. I can't speak to that with any real authority. But I will say that this phone does appear, and the flat screen is a lot better. Uh, You know, the, the, the curved screen, I wouldn't say it was a big deal. It's the way some people said it was. But you would run into annoyances where, you know, you were kind of losing the edge of the screen. So it was it was definitely there, but I do like the flat screen better. That's I definitely think that was a smart decision. But also the camera, haven't run into any of those bugs anymore. The general times when the phone would just do odd things, it never hard locked. It was never fatal flaw material. But there was enough weirdness that you sat there and went, well, this is supposed to be Google's best phone. Why is it doing this? A lot of that does appear to have been fixed. So again, not a review, not even an impressions, but I do, I do think that you have to give credit. If you're going to criticize, you also have to point out when a company or a product does something right. So I don't know. I mean, I could post this and 20 minutes from now, the phone could black screen and I can't use it anymore. That could always happen, but that could happen, honestly, no matter what anybody tells you, that can happen with any phone. But like I said, in general, using it as a daily phone, I have felt like a lot of the things that were strange or inexplicable at the 7 Pro appear appear to have been fixed. So just want to do a five, point that out in case anybody's actually considering this phone. It does seem like they have fixed a number of things and it's performing better. So just felt I should actually talk about it later.